so there's some of us pitching in to provide the service. So we'll start out with the Android, More Voices, number 48. <coughs> I can feel you near me, God. I'll certainly agree with Reverend Hatakunle that we have one of the best choirs around. It's just, it's just a pleasure to listen to him every time. Uh, so I would like to welcome, can you hear me at the back okay? I'd like to welcome everyone here today and those who are watching online. It's a beautiful day and there's probably a hundred other things we could do, but thank you for attending and we hope you find it worthwhile. Uh, for those who are not regulars, there's these small cards that the ushers have. And if anyone, anyone would like a call from the minister or you have something you would like to speak to him about, just pick one up for the ushers, pass it in or put it in the offering plate next week and we'll see that it gets done. So our announcements, I will read some of them because I know you can all read yours out of the bulletin but for those who are watching via the internet or whatever uh, these are for you the first one I'd like to take a, a minute to read in full because it's very important it's the future direction committee this was set up at our annual meeting a couple of months ago and Peter has been passing, and the ushers have been passing around some sheets of paper. And we'd like you to put on it your favorite or some of your favorite memories of St. James or what St. James means to you. Now, it doesn't have to be today. If you can do it and before you go, that's fine, or pass it in on the offering plate next week. That would be great as well. So the future directory committee was formed during the congregational meeting on February 19th of this year to look at future opportunities and direction of the church. The committee is seeking input from all members and adherents of St. James with any thoughts and ideas on the future direction of our church. Your input is vital for this project, so please take part. You'll find a sample of a living faith story as supplied by the United Church National Office for each church to complete on our website or at the church office. Our committee is gathering information on this living faith story with your help. You can email the thoughts to St. James at nb.aibn.com or drop them off at the office. Uh, it says here the deadline is supposed to be tomorrow, but if you can get them in soon, that would be great. Uh, if you have any questions, you can call Peter Clark or Nigel, uh, and they will help you there. So some of the upcoming events, spring sale, it's come around to that time again, June 1st and 2nd. Confirmation and baptism, you can contact the church office if you'd like to have baptism 
join the church through confirmation or transfer, and we welcome each person on June the 4th. The update on the directory is that it had, it's had its third proofreading, and it's being processed, and for all those who had photos taken, they'll receive a free copy, and other copies of the directory are available for $20. And for through the week, they've got games at the church, Sparks and Embers, 6.15 on Tuesday. Wednesday, the quilting group at 1, guides, 6.30 to 7.45. Choir practice, as if they needed practice. They're great without it, 7.15. Youth with a purpose, 6 to 7. And on this Saturday, there's a fashion show, uh, from Fashion Today at 2 o'clock, and I don't know if there's any tickets left or not, but it's usually a sold-out event. And a donation has been made to the youth camp in memory of Merrill Cox by Mary Cox Price. Thank you. So we will... If you will join with me to the call of worship, it's from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. The rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And our opening prayer. Come to us, holy God, as we gather before you. Encircle us with your love. Bless us with your sustaining presence. And surround us with your grace. Draw us around your living word and bind us to one another as disciples of Christ whose spirit is in our midst. Amen. Amen. And our opening hymn this morning is number 748.
morning, everyone. Morning. Please join me in our prayer of approach and confession. Dear Jesus, we confess that too often we let the events around us shatter our trust in your love. When terror strikes, innocence falls, we wonder if love can defeat violence. When the truth gets lost among misleading claims, we wonder if love can prevail over lies. Forgive us, God, when we lose our trust in the power of your love so soon after we raise Jesus from death to live. Amen. The Apostle Paul asked, What will separate us from the love of Christ? Hardship, distress, peril, or sword? No, he declared, neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Let us rejoice that no matter what happens around us, God's gracious and forgiving love will never let us go. Amen. Celebration time this morning. I have a celebration. Former Ranger Hannah McKinney is here worshiping this morning. Five years, she graduated with her master's, and she'll be starting a new full-time job tomorrow. So let's give her a hand. She was one of our star rangers. She'll go down in history. Go down in history. Any other celebrations this morning? Last day of tax season. Last day of tax season, yes. That's a good one. That's a <laughs> Yeah. Evelyn, you should be really happy. Yes, good. For sure. Any other celebrations? Okay, if not, let's sing our celebration song, please. Congratulations to you, may Jesus be praised, may God's richest blessing abide unto you. And now, Angela, for the children's time, please. Morning. Today we are going to start with a guessing game. I'd like you to guess what I'm th what I'm thinking about, and I've got this clues for you. So the first thing is. have a guess what this is about? Yes, the hospital. And the other one is? A police car? Yep, that's right. Fire truck? Yeah. This is what I'm talking about. All of these are part of our community. That's right. This is what I've been thinking about our community. When I looked in the dictionary, I read that the word community means a group of people that live in the same area or have similar interests. When I look at the symbols, they tell me even more about our community. They tell me in our community that we share a, that we share a library card. that we all want our children to have places to play, that we want to look after the safety of each other with a police car. 
with a police car or a fire truck. I mean, got a fire chief right there. <laughs> Protecting each and every one of us. We have all sorts of people living in our community, and all these things are for all of us. Whether we're rich or poor, strong or weak, young or old. In our community, we believe everyone is important and should be looked after. Now our church and all of us here are part of this community, and we try to make it better and stronger. What are some things that we, do, that we at this church do to show that we love and care for people in our community? Does anyone have an idea? Want to say something? I think something we do is that we pray for each other around us, that we share a time of fellowship after a service, that we have coffee and tea after service is over, that we visit people who are sick and make cards for people who can't be here, that we share our money through offerings and our food through the food bank. To help you remember the kind of community we are part of, I made another card with the word community looking like this. What's different about it? There's a heart. That shows for all the people we love in our community. The heart reminds me that God loves each and every person and every living thing. The cross reminds me of Jesus' teachings and his own life that showed us how to love each other. Let's remember the word community. Let's remember that as Christians, we try to bring about the loving and caring community that God wants and showed us through Jesus. All right. Time for the prayer. Hey guys, do you want to bow your heads and we're going to say a little prayer? Thank you, God, for the good news of Easter that Jesus is with us again to show us your way. Amen. Thank you very much for that. One of the nice things about getting this COVID stuff over with is allowing the children to pre make their presentation in the morning, and it's one of the things I look forward to. They do a great job. And the next is our hymn, number 341, Fairest Lord Jesus.
first reading is from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 15. Everything that happens in this world happens at the time that God, at the time, at the time God chooses. He sets the time for birth and the time for death, the time for planting and the time for pulling up, the time for killing and the time for healing, the time for tearing down and the time for building. He sets the time for sorrow and the time for joy, the time for mourning and the time for dancing, the time for making love and the time for not making love, the time for kissing and the time for not kissing. He sets the time for finding and the time for losing, the time for saving and the time for throwing away, the time for tearing up and the time for mending, the time for silence and the time for talk. He sets the time for love and the time for hate, the time for war and the time for peace. What do we gain from all our work? I know the heavenly burdens that God has laid upon us. He has set the night time for everything. It's the right time for everything. He has given us a desire to know the future, but never gives us the satisfaction of fully understanding what he does. So I realized that all we can do is be happy and do the best we can while we are still alive. All of us should eat and drink and enjoy what we have worked for. It is God's gift. I know that everything God does will last forever. You can't avoid anything. You can't add anything or take anything away from it. And one thing God does is to make us stand in awe of him. Whatever happens or can happen has already happened before. God makes the same thing happen again and again. And the second reading is from Psalm 29, verses 1 to 11. Praise the Lord, you heavenly beings. Praise his glory and power. Praise, praise the Lord's glorious name. Bow down before the Holy One when he appears. The voice of the Lord is heard on the seas. The glorious God thunders, and his voice echoes over the ocean. The voice of the Lord is heard in all its might and majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars, even the cedars of Lebanon. He makes the mountains of Lebanon jump like calves and makes Mount Hebron leap like a young bull. The voice of the Lord makes the lightning flash. His voice makes the desert shake. He shakes the desert of Kadesh. The Lord's voice shakes the oaks and strips the leaves from the trees while everyone in his temple shouts glory to God. The Lord rules over the deep waters. He rules as a king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people and blesses them with peace. The word of the Lord.
interesting. Good morning, everybody, and good morning to those who are watching on live stream. <clears throat> I hope your weather is better wherever it is, and I just want everybody to know before I start, my rhubarb has come up. During the winter, uh, we wear warm clothing, hats, and gloves in minus degree weather with the wind blowing, shoveling the driveway or scraping the ice from the windshield. When spring arrives, we think of new growth. Tulips and flowers start blooming and the grass starts to turn green. The summer is a time of vibrant growth and we experience life at its fullest. In the fall, we witness the beauty of fall colors the bounty of our garden, and once again, a time to prepare for the cold and darkness of winter. Spring is the season of the year when we have an opportunity to spend a few days outdoors, relax, and time to reflect on the glories of God. This morning's message results from me sitting on the patio, astonished at his mysteries and how he keeps all of his creations working in harmony. One sees the hummingbird feeding on the flower, soon followed by the worker honeybee gathering nectar to take back to the colony. The birds are singing and communicating within themselves to warn others of my presence. The chipmunk rushes past my feet, heading directly for the dish of peanuts left for him, and even the mosquito who placed his own life into peril when he landed on my arm. One can watch the squirrel tipping the bird feeder, dumping seeds on the ground to feed the pigeons. If one were to take a moment and think about how insects, birds, and other animals move, communicate, and have adapted and survived in our changing world and seasons, we are mesmerized how this all happened. An ant colony created their own community underground. A honeybee survives our harsh winter living off their stored nectar and they develop their own communication system to inform others in the hive the location, distance, and direction of a plant source by wiggling their abdomen <coughs> at a specific speed and angle within the hive. We are intrigued how the monarch butterfly knows when it's time to leave Woodstock fly over a two-month period, 5,000 kilometers to a specific location, only 100 kilometers wide on the top of a mountain in southern Mexico, on a course never previously traveled, to meet and congregate for five months of the year with millions of their species. Geese and ducks return in the spring and settle in their same location. We're trying to invent artificial intelligence and GPS location devices that have already been created and are being, are being used by these creatures. I hesitate to ponder if members of the animal kingdom think us humans are terribly stupid and behind the times. With medical research, we often rely on members of the plant and animal kingdom to provide the answers and missing links when we develop new medication and biological virus vaccines. We store seeds for years with no change, and when we bury them a few centimeters in the ground, into darkness within a few days, God gives them a new life. The season of springtime begins long before new shoots emerge from the ground or leaves break out from the buds and the robins appear. During the winter, God is working. Many things are happening unknown to us, and what might appear to be dormant is awaiting the warmth and spring rains to provide the signal it is time to grow. In the winter, if we choose, we can rest like a hibernating bear, not be productive, and ponder little about our future. During this time, we may experience grief, the loss of a job, long separation from family members unable to travel, or an illness. We find life to be cold and unforgiving, just like the dormant seeds or bulbs lying under the snow. God is still doing things within our lives during this period of time. He is comforting us during times of tragedy, and he gives us the strength to deal with challenges we are exposed in our daily lives. 
In the spring and the arrival of warmth, we begin to smile, laugh, go for walks, look at the colorful tulips, and notice the wonders of God working within nature to make our lives more enjoyable. Spring is an in-between time when we want to start a new life full of energy, but we are also sensitive to the possibility of a late snowfall or some freezing rain, possible flooding, grief, despair, and hoping God has not forgotten us. Once this time has passed, we begin to feel good again. Spring is here. Spring is a time when all the possibility and promise of life is on display and nothing is hidden. God is always with us during all seasons and cares for his children even when we experience darkness within our hearts. Spring is a season when if we can reflect, we can reflect and plan on how to make our spiritual life more enjoyable for the summer season of vibrant growth and life at its fullest. The picture you're looking at in the Falkland Islands. Um, I had an op <coughs> excuse me. I had an opportunity to, we'd had an opportunity to be there and um, met a dairy farmer, took us to his farm. And there was, there was on his farm with his cattle. And he said he'd been doing this for over three years. I was the first person that he'd ever seen penguins get that close to. I'd scratch one under the chin. And that rope behind you, by the way, don't cross the rope because there were landmines on the other side of that. So anyway, enough of that. If one were to give every young person a copy of the Bible to read, it would not take long for them to tell you it is filled with boring stuff. It is not a mystery novel. They do not understand the words nor can determine the plot and story it's all about. When one gets a bit older, you realize the Bible is filled with mysteries, contradictions, pain, and joy, and the wisdom of the words Jesus taught when he spoke with his disciples, and these words become part of your entire life. It's all there. The whole experience of human life and faithfulness in a spiritual relationship with God. Scripture reading in all seasons provides an opportunity to plan and reflect on our purpose in God's world. God's creations took millions of years to reach their current form, and we marvel on how we interact and live with his nature. We still do not, still do not know the mysteries of his creations and only guess on how the dinosaurs got to be embedded so far deep underground with other fossils, or how the planets, meteors, and universe interact in the vastness of space. With a little bit of research, one can find reference to all this in the Bible. It is difficult to understand at a young age if the answers to all your questions can be found in reference using the words within the Bible written centuries ago by individuals not having the scientific background or knowledge we have today, and interpreting the images of cave pictures once used to communicate before a spoken or written language had been created. One should be reminded human existence on earth is not long in God's terms. The earth does not need us, which is why we should, be care, we should care about it and pay, pay particular attention to the words spoken by God who is in control when you stare at the stars this evening, the light you are looking at may have been sent toward Earth a century ago. And light travels at 160,000 miles per second or 300,000 kilometers per second. We are part of God's nature, but very small in the vastness of space. A few weeks ago, for those not present, we spoke about the Church of Sardis and in Revelation 3, 1 to 6, Jesus said to this church, I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. That's the church of Sardis, Turkey. The Christian church looks spiritually vibrant on the outside, but spiritually lifeless on the inside. Christianity was growing during this time period and spreading across the region. People were torn with the rules imposed by many kings and rulers and a new belief in God and Christianity. Is it possible? We can relate to similar challenges today when churches are experiencing low numbers and attempting to find innovative ways to stay alive and spread the word of God. 
Churches need to stir up the living spirit of God in order to come to life. We can liken it to taking a tour of an archaeological site in Rome to see the Parthenon or Colosseum or the Acropolis at Athens that are still there today. Those structures provide an image of wealth and power by the ruling kings, but to some degree living off the reputation of past deeds and the faded glory of a dead empire. Appearance can be deceiving. One of the quotes referenced a few weeks ago was, we need to get back to the basics of our faith. Is it possible we may be experiencing the church of Sardis today in our society where we have persons or a church appear to be alive inside spiritually, but in reality their outward actions of supporting Christianity are close to death? There are many ornate churches around the world, but their primary focus is to face the challenges of today's generation in spreading the word of God and dealing with the spiritual minds of individuals. The letter to the Colossians describes it this way. You have stripped off the old self with practices and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is full of knowledge and new understandings which come from God, your creator. Revelations 3, 1 to 6. And unto the angel of the church is Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard to hold fast and repent. If, therefore, thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and, shalt, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which has defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name on, out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. A few people of the church of Sardis were faithful to Christ and had not soiled their clothes. They were promised they would be taken on a walk with Christ and wear white. Soiled clothes implied people were not spiritually pure and followed their faith of serving God. During our life journey, we have experiences that will cause us to pause, change our views and strip off the old self and clothe us with a new self and appreciation of our purpose in serving God. This may be a sudden unexpected change in our health or a near death experience. We all know family members. During these times, we strip off our old self and immediately reach out to God and pray like never before. Many people doing mission work, providing aid and medical care in underdeveloped foreign countries and witness people living in poverty are stripped of their old self. This happens within our own community in volunteering to help the less fortunate. They change, clothed with a new self and a different appreciation and purpose of life to serve and love others. <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you who took that picture inside the Sistine Chapel. Through nature, God is able to teach us, speak to us, and provide for us. We can find in scripture that we humans are called to protect all of which he has created. The season of spring sitting on the patio, witnessing God's nature working in harmony provides an opportunity to reflect on our faithfulness to God, our purpose, and what we can do better to serve him and grow spiritually to ensure we will live a more meaningful, happy, and fulfilled life. These past few years, we have lived in our interior world due to the pandemic staying where we felt safe while scientists were challenged to unravel the mysteries of God to defeat this threat to our society. We were limited in having the opportunity to reach the beauty of the exterior world. We have now been jolted and experienced the fragility of our own person and the sensitivity of our ecological world under the control of God. We are a part of his world. When you're watching nature, always remember, 
the thin layer surrounding earth in which life exists is fragile. We have little to no control over our exterior world as we are in a relationship with something much bigger than ourselves. We rely on God providing and sharing some of his scientific mysteries to survive in his world, the world of nature working in harmony. Is God's way to remind us and get our attention that we must care for his creation. He is the one who gives us life and is in control. Psalm 29 is one of the oldest psalms in the Bible, yet it recognizes the glory of God in nature. Psalm 29 reveals the power, wonder, and majesty of God. God is the God of all creation. God is the one we experience in the mightiness of the storm and the peaceful quietness of an evening listening to the sounds of nature. Spring is a time for us to make choices in our lives, to explore possibilities, to choose which path we want to travel, to embellish wrong or embrace the good and who we will be. We all come to church to worship. That is why we set aside sacred times when we open our hearts to God in silent prayer. When we listen to the sacred words of scripture, we find the meaning of our existence and our connection with God and nature. No longer are we then a speck of dust in that his vast universe. When we gather here today and listen to the scripture words spoken in the Bible, our lives become holy and complete. When we take time to pause here in prayer and worship, our lives are made holy and complete with God. Give thanks to God who is with you. Colossians 3, 15, 17, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which we also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Every part of scripture is God's word. Spring is the time of year when we celebrate new life because we are an Easter people. We reflect on our purpose of life and the importance and role we have in supporting God's request to love and care for one another. That's a picture of inside Montserrat. It's an abbey located about a half hour train ride north of Barcelona, Spain, and the only way you can get to it is by cable car. Fascinating. I think I read this part. <laughs> Every part of scripture, I think I said, did I not? Is God's word. Spring is a time when we celebrate new life because, yeah, I did that, sorry. Our closing prayer. We thank God for the blessing of this day. Everything in his creation, including us, has a purpose in life and all are connected to his nature and to God. And we look around us, as we look around us, we are amazed at the greatness and majesty of all that you have made. You have given us such beauty. Thank you for the rich Christian lives we are privileged to have and the living things around us. Thank you for the blessing of harmony in nature. May the earth continue to thrive under your loving presence. Amen.
at this time, is there a video on mission and service? Okay, we'll let you roll that right now. My name is Emmanuel Teresa Baya, and uh, I come from Magarini sub-county in Kiriki County. I was in ARI in 2009. ARI, Asian Rural Institute, is an agricultural training center your mission and service gifts support. ARI taught Emmanuel skills that helped him develop his children's center and farm. We trained the community on uh, organic farming. So at Magarini Children's Center, we protect and take care of the soil. Emmanuel lost his parents when he was a child. His heart stirred when he saw children, orphaned because of the HIV AIDS crisis, under the cashew trees near his property, too busy looking for food to go to school. We have been taking care of our orphan and our vulnerable children in providing them with basic needs, including education. Today, over 287 children attend the Children's Center, and the demonstration farm serves seven communities. We have realized that as we take care of the soil, we take care of ourselves. As we take care of the land, we take care of the children, we take care of the people, and this brings love to the community. Your gifts support extraordinary leaders like Emmanuel to develop life-changing potential. Make a gift through mission and service today. Together, we can make a difference. There are offering boxes at each of the uh, exits to the uh, church, and we'll say our offertory prayer together. Dear God, thank you for the care you offer us as our shepherd. Bless our gifts so that they will spread your abundant love to lives needing caring. Bless our lives so we may care for the world as we follow Jesus daily. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The prayers of the people in intersection. Dear Jesus, we are thankful today for all you provide to sustain us. You call our weary souls to rest when the world seems busy. You bless us with the promise of new life as pastors around us turn green, announcing another spring. You gather us around tables of friendship to draw strength from one another. Thank you for the signs of your goodness and mercy we can treasure daily. Dear Jesus, we pray for others, friends, neighbors, and strangers alike. We pray for people struggling with illness, loneliness, grief, or sadness. And church people that we pray for today, Anne-Marie Vautour, Will and Marjorie Patterson, Watson Kirstead, Kathy Orser and family, and Reverend Andrew Coomley and family. Walk with them through dark days and steep valleys. Dear Jesus, we pray for people in countries and communities where it is not safe to live out their faith or express their views openly. Walk with them through dark days and steep valleys. Dear Jesus, <coughs> We pray for victims of discrimination and acts of hatred and those who fear violence daily. Walk with them through dark days and street valleys. Dear Jesus, we pray for journalists and advocates for justice who live under threat for telling the truth. Walk with them through dark days and steep valleys. Dear Jesus, we pray for churches, local organizations, and businesses that face difficulty reorganizing in the presence of economic challenges. Walk with them through dark days and deep valleys. Dear Jesus, we pray for our families, friends, and ourselves 
as well as those in the news whose situations tug at our hearts. Walk with us through dark days and deep valleys. Dear Jesus, we offer these prayers and our unspoken concerns to you in the name of the risen Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from an evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our closing hymn is In More Voices, number 30. It's a song of praise to the Maker. join me in the commissioning and benediction. Go in peace, sure that the good shepherd walks beside you. May Christ give you courage on the journey. And may the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you now and forever. Amen.
and the choral benediction is Voices United 884. We shall go out with joy. Shall go out.